Hi hey everyone, how are you? It's Sharon here. I'm excited to be here and we're in our new house. Um, sorry for the little minute delay there. My phone just went black right when I was about to go live. These technical things. Anyway, we're here. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm just going to get my live up and running on the laptop. Alrighty. Okay, I can see you now. How are you, Janet? Hi, Mary Jo. Awesome to see you. We are going to be working on a child's chair today. So we're painting, well, I already painted it, this colour uh, pink, which is the colour Elise from the um, Australian chalk paint brand Artisan Paint Company. So, hi, Joyce Ann. Awesome. Everyone watching from all over the USA. Hope it's not too cold there. We've got aircon in our new house, so here I am at our dining table. Got the kitchen in the background. Still haven't found, the, found out where I'm going to be doing all my painting and workshopping. Yes, it is. Hi, Kip. Yes, this is my new place. Well, it's our rental place for now, so we're here for now. Um, today, the stencil that I'm going to be working with is this, it's called Spring Sayings. So here's the first one. It's gorgeous. And if you saw my post yesterday, uh, you might have seen that I was trying to decide which one to put on. I think I've made a decision. Oops, trying to undo it, take it out of the packet. Here we go. Oop, so we've got that one that I showed you here. Live life in full bloom. There's in a field of roses. She is a wildflower. This is the one I'd like to do today. So my idea is that if you can see the little chair here, we're going to pop some of the words up on the back of the seat and then the rest of the beautiful wildflowers down here on the seat. Uh, so then the third one, so it's got three stencils in the pack. The links to all our stencils are up in the description of the live. You can jump over there and just search spring sayings in the search bar at Essential Stencil. Use my code, I restore stuff. But if you use the link that we provide in the description or in the comments, that will automatically add that 10% off for you at the checkout. So all things grow with love. That one too is just beautiful. So how many people have got all their spring stencils yet? There's still some really beautiful ones there. So um, let's go with this one. Now last week we did our tiered tray stencils and remember I was working on this little Bible book. Well it's a little book, just a paper mache kind of book. So remember I did that and I still, we were moving all last week. So we've been moving house, packing boxes, unpacking boxes, cleaning houses. It's all happening guys. We're exhausted. <laughs> we're here, but just. Um, anyway, I had created this with the stencil on it for God so loved the world. So if you're looking for that Easter stencil, you can grab that in the Easter set. Use my code, I restore stuff, get your 10% off. It's got these gorgeous little book ends at the top here and I, I want to do something with the highlights of those, but today I might, if I have time, I want to paint, paint this with the metallic gold. We've got Artisan's Alchemy in gold here. So let me get onto the chair first and we'll see if I get time to just shimmy, um, shimmer that a little bit, shimmy that. Yes, Dawn's just got hers. You've got your spring stencils. There's some beautiful ones out there. Hang on, that's not the one I was going to do. Where did it go? I like the idea of, and I've done this to chairs before, I've put some of the stencil on the back and then some on the seat of it. So I'll point the camera down a little bit. This is going to be a little bit tricky to do just like this, but look how that, oh, I don't know if you can see that, we'll bring it a little bit closer. This is going to fit nicely in a field of roses. She is A, and then we'll put the wildflower section down here on the seat. So we're going to be doing this part up the top, these cute little butterflies. Don't forget you can mix and match your stencils all the time. And these little butterflies you can just add even to other areas of the chair. So we're paint we are stenciling a child's chair today. So I'm going to lay the chair on its back. Hi guys, thank you all for sprinkling and sharing the love and letting people know that we are live here by just hitting that little button the share button. Hang on, I'll point the camera down so we can see. So you can see I'm using a moving box on top of our dining table. <laughs> Why not? Hey, we've just unpacked so many moving boxes. 
not going to be needing them for a while. We are hoping to build a house. So we're buying land and building, but in the meantime, this is our rental place that we're staying at for the next uh, long while. So can you all see that there? I'm just going to be stenciling this top part on here first. So I am using the color charcoal in the Artisan chalk paint, the Aussie paint. Wow, you guys, you're from all over. Thank you for sprinkling. What an awesome idea. Yes. Oops, it's gone a little bit hard on the top there. Whoop. I probably might need to clean that mess up later. That's what we do, isn't it? Later. Uh, now, we could use a lot of color with this. I'm going to go with the charcoal and I'm just going to use this cardboard to do my wiping off because I didn't bring my wiping off paper and just use a little bit of what I've got in the lid and wiping that off, excess off on the side. Oh, I'm making a big mess today. And we've got a bristle. You don't get a lot of bristles coming out. These are the essential stencil, uh, stencil brushes. <clears throat> but every now and then, I, when they're just brand new, you just move your fingers around inside the bristle and make sure that you've got most of that off. So just using my cardboard moving box as my offloading station. I'm just offloading that now. Now I'm not going to be using painter's tape on here. I'm just going to have to hold it down with my hands. Um, I probably could, but number one, I didn't find it in my packing, in my un unpacking. Um, I'm just watching your comments at the same time. Tina says it's a perfect project. She's just got a small rocking chair for her granddaughter. Be stenciling on it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, this one is the three quarter inch brush. And these, I love this font. It's just like a typewriter font. So I've offloaded, you can see as much as I have been able to right there. You offload your brush till it's almost dry. It's almost a dry stencil brush. And the reason we do that is, I feel like a teacher. Who can tell me the reason that we offload our brush? <laughs> it's so that we don't get bleeding underneath the letters on the stencil. And, um, you can see that I'm using a swirly kind of motion and that's because it helps to just get the paint all there in the stencil. And I'm just going to dip one more time because it feels like I'm getting less on my, less grey on my pink. I'm using the colour charcoal and it's a really nice dark grey. You can use any acrylic paint. Yeah, Danielle says pink and grey is very pretty. I love the combination of pink and grey together and this pink it just is quite springy isn't it so we're using the three-quarter inch stencil brush from essential stencil you can get those in your order using my code as well and you'll get 10% off the stencil brushes they come in a set of four okay I'm just gonna move my hand over here so this is the set we're using is the spring sayings so we've got the this one which says in a field of roses she is a wildflower anyone else have little girls who might be wildflowers I thought this is a cute little girl chair could use it for anyone couldn't you well <coughs> And this is going on quite quickly because we've offloaded the brush and then hopefully my hand's not in the way too much. I'm just trying to use it to, so there's a little uh, lip on the chair that comes up which makes the stencil come up. So I'm just got to push that down with my fingers. Sometimes I paint my fingers and that's okay. It's just chalk paint. It's water-based so it all comes off. All comes off in the wash they say. Offloading. And just adding a bit more here. You can kind of see as you go whether it's covered it really well or whether it's just um, you need to go over it again. It's probably a lot better to just go over something um, with a second coat rather than have too much on your brush and risk it bleeding under the stencil and getting a bit of a mess. But I always tell people to practice on 
a cardboard moving boxes would be perfect with some of the Amazon boxes that you might get. Hi Carolyn, first time watching. Awesome, thank you so much for watching. Danielle's so thankful she found Essential Stencils. Yes, a great community of crafters here. And if you're in the Stencil of the Month Club, um, there's some gorgeous stencils out this month and they are sent to you, a pack of three stencils every month. Amazing. All right, so can you see that there? <coughs> nice and crisp lines, crisp stencil because we offloaded most of that. So there you go. All right, I am going to do the seat part. Okay, Barb's asked a great question. I'm just gonna pop this up a little bit and see if I can find that. She said, for the seat part, I wonder how much ceiling you would have to put for wear and tear prevention. Yeah, as you can see in our move, you might be able to see that. I've got some little scratches and dings there that I might need to touch up or um, <clears throat> I could just go for that shabby distressed look and actually sand it with a bit of sandpaper. It was a bit of a blue paint under here and under that was the wood. So I could just distress that, but I could do that afterwards and then I'm going to seal it with a tough coat sealer a flat matte sealer to make sure that for the wear and tear I would seal the whole thing <clears throat> it actually with chalk paint it actually deepens the color okay so I've got my <clears throat> saying on the background I've done that part on the back of the chair now to do my wildflower down the bottom so you could do a couple of things oh, I love how that just fits perfectly right there um, you could move it right to the edge, but I think that I will just sort of center it a bit more. Okay, can we see that? Let me see. Trying to get this down a bit. Hopefully it's not too shiny and you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, this paint is a mess right here. <coughs> if you've just joined me, we've just moved house. We're all, un well, I wouldn't say we're unpacked. We're all in. <laughs> One room is chockers full of boxes. Oh my goodness, you guys. Moving after 18 years of being in the same house is a mammoth task. And when we run our own businesses from home, both my husband and I, and he has a whole bunch of, um, like he's a video audio guy. So, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to paint over this. So if I had painter's tape, I would put that there to remind me. I might use my handy dandy essential brochure that comes with every stencil set with great instructions inside, I might add. So if you're stenciling for the first time, you've got your visual instructions that you can look at there. Plus you've got all our lives here on the essential stencil page from all of the ambassadors. They go live most days of the week so that you can see some new projects. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna check your comments every now and then. So if you do have any questions, let me know. And I'll see if I can, oops, they're going so fast. The pink is pretty, yeah, it's the color Elise. It's only available here in Australia though, this one, it's a chalk paint, but you can use any acrylic based or water based paint. Oops, sorry. <coughs> <laughs> oh, thanks Peggy. She says essential stencil products, stencils, brushes and wooden tags, they're all the best. <laughs> She's used these. A lot of um, people who watch are a part of our Stencil of the Month Club and there's a whole Facebook group in there of really talented people. Some are sign makers, some are crafters and some are people who just love to do crafting as a hobby, not necessarily to sell their stuff and wanted for gifts to give to people, want to make things. So I'm going to move my thing across so I don't accidentally get on the, the other words that I already have. And if you've just joined me, I've got the words up the top of the back of the chair on the seat back. Offloading. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh wow, Catherine, it's no candy. Said she's lived there 31 years. No, yeah, it's a it's a big job. We thought we had decluttered and um, culled a lot of stuff, but even so, like I got to my kitchen here and started unloading boxes, and our kitchen was twice the size of this house in our old house, and our kitchen had probably twice the size of twice the cupboard space, and so. I was emptying kitchen boxes and thinking, well, do we really need this? Nope. Do we really need that? Nope. <laughs> so I literally made another whole box full of stuff to go to charity. So um, someone else can enjoy it. <clears throat> so Caroline says, are you rubbing the paint on instead of dabbing it? She's very new to stenciling. Yes, Caroline. So. What um, I love to do, and everyone will find their own unique way of stenciling. And what I'm doing is doing a little, uh, pounce it down and then swirl it into the grooves. Now chalk paint, if you know, is quite a thicker paint. So that pink chalk paint has got a little bit of a, um, a little bit of texture to it. So sometimes you might be able to see that. I don't know if you can. It's got little kind of lines where the brush strokes are and things from the paint. So you kind of want to get in there and swirl it around. But like I was saying before, <coughs> if you don't offload all the paint or most of the paint off your brush, like I'm doing on this piece of cardboard, let me see if we can see that. So I'm dipping the paint in the paint lid, which has quite a bit on it, rubbing it off on the side. I don't know if you can see this here. Oh, no, you can't see where I'm, I'm just rubbing it off onto the cardboard. There you go, so you can see. And uh, then I'm putting it on here and swirling it around. So the brush has very little paint on it when I do that swirling. If the paint, if I had a lot more paint on the brush, it would definitely go underneath and create a whole lot of what we call bleeding. It gives you those fuzzy, furry edges um, that look a little bit untidy. So I like to have... I, these are little branch parts. I'm kind of going backwards and forwards. I kind of wish I had my painter's tape here because, oh, it shouldn't be too bad when I come down to here. I think I've got this on slightly crooked, which doesn't, doesn't, <laughs> that means it could be crooked. We'll see when we're all done, but I'm sure that any little kid is going to just love sitting on this chair because it's going to be pretty. Sometimes I uh, dab it. So you could, so there's a couple of ways of doing the stenciling to answer that question before or that observation. Uh, you can pounce it like this. I find that if I've offloaded the brush a little bit um, or a lot, I've offloaded all that paint off the brush and there's hardly any on there, then the pouncing doesn't work as much. But that when I just pounce and then swirl, pounce and swirl like this, then it does work a lot better. You can kind of hear that pounce and squish. <laughs> smoosh! That's another technical term I like to use. Pounce and smoosh. See if I'm pouncing, you can't really see that going on as well. It's very faded. But when I swirl it around, it's like it gets all on the inside. <coughs> okay, so I'm using a gorgeous pink and grey combination. Imagine the stencils that you could put on a little child's chair. So these, uh, this set here is the Spring Sayings that I'm using to just to recap for those of you who might have joined a bit later. And it's called Spring Sayings. It's a 12 inches by 12 inch set and it's perfect size for a child's seat. So 12 by 12. And if you missed the beginning, I've put the top part of the words up on the back, on the back of the seat up the top and I'll show you that in a minute. I also noticed that in the Stencil of the Month Club, people have been posting their tiered trays from our um, ambassador uh, 
theme last week when we just all created gorgeous tiered trays. There were some beautiful ones in the Stencil of the Month Club and I'm loving the inspiration that we get in there. If you do join the Stencil of the Month Club, you get to be a part of their Facebook group and you receive stencils each month and there's an add-on stencil that you can opt in for. The add-on this month is really, really good. Uh, but if you use my code to get into the Stencil of the Month Club, which is up in the description of the live, you can use my code IRESTOREStUFF and get 50% off your first month. All right, so I'm just using this gorgeous grey, but of course you could use a bit of colour. And if you're doing two colours on a stencil, it's just a little bit trickier, but one of the things you can do, say I wanted to use this to do the flowers, you would just tape off around where the flowers are you know, put your piece of paper or whatever you want to block it off or some painter's tape and just do the flower in another colour. I could use the grey as its background. And hey, I've got my gold out, so I may even be able to do that in a minute once this is dried and show you a little bit of a 3D effect that you could add to those flowers. We might make them gold, hey? Sounds like a plan. <coughs> I'm just making sure I'm catching your comments at the same time. Yeah, I love to do things on furniture. Actually, that's what I mainly do is uh, my blog over at I Restore Stuff is mainly a lot of painting furniture and home decor and upcycling things that, you know, you might have thought, no, I don't need that anymore. It's not working for me, that color or whatever. With just a bit of paint or even refinishing something with sanding it back and staining it, you can change the whole look of a piece of furniture or some home decor. So you go check out my blog, it's irestorestuff.com and you can find a whole bunch of fun makeovers there, trans furniture for transformations, things like that. So, okay, nearly finished our stems of the flowers, which I kind of need to go up and down for. I like to get a full coverage on some things. Other things, like some of the farmhouse signs, that I have made, I'm not too concerned about getting the full coverage on it because I want it to be distressed and old looking. But this one I kind of feel like I want to get it all covered up. Okay, so got that part done. Let's do the reveal. Ta-da! Wildflower. And if we <coughs> pop that back here and I'll let you see the words at the top. So here's the words from the top of the stencil. In a field of roses, she is a wildflower. You can see my cushion in the background there. <laughs> so just pretend that's not there because that's not a stenciled word from yeah. So that it almost looks like I've got something there as well. So there you go. In a field of roses, she is a wildflower. Isn't that cute? So let me show you how I can go with the gold on top of that. If you remember last week, we did our tiered tray stenciling. Oh, it's my cloth. I think I'm finished with my grey now, so I can probably pop that away and clean up that mess in a minute. So make sure you clean your brushes out. You can just use a little bit of soapy water. I'm just going to pop that right here in the water now, and that can just be soaking while I finish my live, and then I'll go in and clean it, make sure it's nice and clean to use for next time. So this is what I was doing last week on our live, and it almost looks like, well, it is a book, They've made it to look like a book with those edges. So I'm going to try and use the gold that I've got and then I'll go on and stencil these in gold. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to use an ordinary craft kind of brush for that. And I'm just using a metallic color. If you wanted to, you could find my Amazon storefront and I've got a whole bunch of things um, collected in like a wish list collection in the storefront um, of tools that I use, of things that you can stencil on, all kinds of things like that. I popped that in my live last, uh, the link in my live last week, but if you wanted that link, I can pop it in later. I'll go back and answer your questions. So let me know if you need that Amazon storefront link. Oops, my little, what do you call this? Sealer. The seal is just kind of stuck there. I want to get that off. Um, oh, I 
guys. Just trying to make sure that I don't miss any of your questions. And I do often miss a lot because you can't do three things at once. We can try, can't we? <laughs> okay, so this is the little box and it, it opens up. It's kind of like, and I think I've got one of these on the Amazon storefront in there. Uh, so I've got a bit of gold on my brush. Just um, wiped off one edge and I'm going to just put it in the center in here and I feel like it doesn't matter if there's if there's brush strokes oops sorry I'm trying to make it so that you can see too maybe I'll just pop you down a little bit so that you can see here we go so I'm just putting my brush through there need a bit more on the brush and those if there are any brush strokes it kind of looks like the pages of the book right I don't know how this how well this comes up on the video but for me it kind of looks like those gold edged pages of the book oh yeah there you can see a bit of a shimmer look at that isn't that cool it just really adds that that finishing touch to it and this was oh someone from essential might does anyone know what set this was from for god so loved the world i think it was like a six by six stencil set for easter but I'm not sure of the actual name of the stencil set. So if anyone knows that, they can pop that in there. And you can look for that one too. You can get your 10% off if you use my code, I restore stuff. That would be helpful. There we go. I love it. These are cute. And so I used this on my tiered tray. If you wanted to have a go, go and have a look. Pretty sure I popped my finished look in the stencil of the month club but I did put it on my page at I restore stuff and you would have seen it this week too essential stencil posted our ambassador live uh, tiered tray finished look there we go so look at that plain black and then we just go in grab a bit of metallic brush and like I said it looks a little bit uh, translucent so it's is that translucent opaque what's the difference there we go translucent is the word still looks a bit clear but you could go over that with to make it uh, stand, um, more gold, but I think that it really makes it look more like pages if I can see those brush strokes down in there like that. See how that looks. Yeah, it really adds to it, doesn't it? There you go. And so on this side here, I feel like I just want to touch those um, edges and I'll show you how that might look. I'm going to do a little dry brush across those um, what do you call that? It's the book binding. So the binding of the book the, on the spine, how they have those ridges that come out. I'm just going to pop that on there like that and it kind of makes those ridges stand out. Or you could use a bit of a glaze and although I could colour in the whole spine with gold too. So I just thought I'd touch those ridges. They are sort of 3D. You can see this one looks a bit standing out, but maybe in person it, um, you can kind of see it a little clearer. Kind of experimenting as I go. And if you've watched me any, for any length of time on any of my other lives, you know that that's the thing. I'm gonna pop that in there, see if we can make that more distinct. Okay, so let's try this. Not sure if this will work or not, but as I, as I dig that into the ridge, I'm going to make this act like a little bit of a glaze, even though it's not got any glaze in it. What I want to do is make those ridges stand out a bit more. So I'm going to get a, a cloth, just wipe this over the whole lot and see if I can wipe it off the high points wet cloth experimenting here we go so what it's doing now is it's letting those the gold sits in the edges so that's another thing you could do so I could go back over it paint those edges gold but I do like how that gold is sitting into the edges of that so there's a few different ways that you could use for the spine of this book See that? Kind of looks like an old book that's been glazed. And I may even do that to the 
paint all over. Just kind of dry brushing and then wiping back. And it is just paint, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's what I say. There's no such thing as mistakes. It's just paint. We can do it again. We can always paint over it and start again if we wanted to. So let me see if we can make this happen. And if you don't like it this way, you can leave yours. I'm just making a bit of a shimmer all across. Hopefully, I'm not going to rub my stencil off though, because it's water-based. But I did paint it last week, so it should stay there. Let's see. Okay, that is creating a bit of a shimmer and a streakiness to the Bible. Isn't that cute? So you can see the edges now a little bit more clearly if I hold that back, whereas before they didn't really stand out. I hope that makes sense. And then this is the difference. So I haven't done anything to the back. See how it just adds a little bit of depth and dimension, having that gold. And, a, and remember, I've done the gold on the inside for the pages. So I love how that turned out. And I had this just sitting on the tiered tray last week. And you could stash, I don't know, precious things in there. You could stash a little bit of cash in there. You know how people, did your nana or did your grandma put money in the pages of her Bible? I know someone's grandma did that. I think it was my husband's grandma. Had money in the pages of her Bible and she would give it to the grandkids when they came over. They'd go looking through the, the Bible for <laughs> little bits of money. Isn't that cute? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that with the back because I just like the look of that. I'm just using a wet cloth and it's not a glaze, it's just the actual gold paint. But see the difference? I'm kind of just creating a little bit of shimmer and dimension. So I've done the front and there's the back. And then we're going to go over my wildflowers on the front of the chair that I've just finished. Oh, thank you guys for watching as I experiment. <laughs> I feel like we're all in this together. But I just wanted to show you how you can just play around with things, um, experiment with things. And if it doesn't work, you can always, I could always just completely paint that a different color. Or I could paint it black again and re stencil the front. I could do all of those things. So there's the little Bible. Now, I do have gold on this brush but it's a craft brush so it may not stencil as well when I put the stencil back on and what I, what I forgot to do is um, clean off my stencil so where I do the flowers I don't want that gray to mix in with you know the gold so I kind of want this a bit clean so for now, I'll just go around where the flowers are and clean that off. Um, but really, it's a great idea to clean your stencils off straight away if you can. Well, we could do the butterflies as well. So I'm just using a wet cloth. It's my brush water over here. And because it's chalk paint, it's a water-based paint and very easily able to be washed off. So we'll just try it for these. Oh, I see we've got some flowers that are kind of, they're not half flowers but they're, they look like they're maybe half open. Okay. There, maybe a butterfly, a couple of flowers here. Just wiping off the grey so that it doesn't uh, blend in with the gold and kind of make it a funny colour. Not sure if I'll do the butterflies yet. I'm just thinking about, oh, there's more flowers than I thought there were. <laughs> we might as well be wiping off the entire thing. I just was going to skip the leaves. Okay, we'll see how that works out. And I'm popping you back up a little bit so you can see the chair that we worked on before. Remember we have the top in a field of roses, she is a, if you missed that part, wildflower. And there's the wildflower just in this chalky grey colour. And now 
Oops, we've got to make sure we get the back of our stencil too because when I put that down, it is going to get all over the chair. Because when you're wiping off the front of your stencil on this side, it comes through to the back. So just be careful of that. If you're trying to do a secondary color, make sure you've wiped off the back of the stencil too. I don't have my dry cloth here to make sure it's all dried off, but it shouldn't take too long. That's what aprons are for, right? Okay. Dry, dry, dry. I like watching paint dry. <laughs> and um, so some of these little bits on things like the butterfly, you just got to be careful with those little pointy parts of your stencils uh, when you're wiping your stencil, not to grab them and lift them back because they can bend very easily. So, but if they do, they're quite easy to just kind of push back into place, which is what happened with this one. It got caught on my cloth and flipped back. You can just, a little bit pliable, you can move it around a bit. Same with this little flower right here. It's bent up a bit, so I'm just going to grab that, point it back down, and there it is, it's laying flat. So pretty easy to fix. Okay, I'm putting it exactly in the right spot, but what I wanted to do is make a little bit of a 3D thing. I was going to use this, but I'll get my other essential stencil brush ready in case I want to use this brush for the gold but I'll just see if this craft brush works since I've got it um, gold on there already just using the artisan gold I'm going to rub that brush off onto the cardboard my handy dandy moving box from moving house okay so what I wanted to do was I've got it in exactly the same spot but I wanted to shift it slightly across and slightly so that it's a bit of a shadow effect. So either way, if you want to do that 3D effect, so easy. Practice on a piece of cardboard first, but you just have to move it slightly across and slightly up or slightly across and down. It doesn't really matter whichever way you wanted to do it. And let me see, whoop, no, not very much paint on the brush. We'll see. I'm just going to pounce this one. And so what should happen is that it should create a little bit of a 3D, um, you should see black on one edge like a shadow. The gold on the upper edge where it's going onto the pink is gonna be quite noticeable that you can still see the black in the background. Um, but I think that that gold, it might not stand out as much if it was on the pink. Sorry, not black background, it's grey, isn't it? See how you can kind of see it standing out. Hang on, let me just lift this up so you can see it a bit. Oh, I'll have to move it, move the camera. Let me do the other ones before I get it out of position. So grabbing the brush, maybe we'll do a little comparison, see how this, because these craft brushes are really not meant for stenciling, so I'm just going to pounce on there. And we will see the, we will see some of that charcoal grey on the shadow side. Okay. Using my essential stencil brush now just to get it in there really well. And I'm just um, offloading it down here on this piece of cardboard. So when you put the gold on a light background, you can't see it very well, but when I put it on a charcoal background, it kind of stands out a lot more. Okay, here we go. Pouncing that on, smushing it around, and that charcoal gray has dried now. I mean, it's not technically 100% dry, but it's definitely tough, touch dry enough to be able to put this gold on the top of it. Another flower, just a bit of pouncing. Wow, I got two, two flowers out of that, that brush load. <laughs> Sometimes you can get more than others. 
The golds and the metallics are fairly opaque, so they do generally need several coats. So I could go back over this. I would probably let it dry a little bit longer to add a, a second coat to it, making sure that I line up where I had the shadow exactly right. Oops. Finding my flowers. You could do the butterflies a different colour if you wanted to add another dimension to the picture. One more big flower up here, how about that? I'm just sort of coming in from the edge of the flower on the edges, you can see that. Go ahead and do those butterflies, hey? They need a bit of sparkle. Copper would be a nice metallic too to do on here. Or silver. Oop, now that one's really close. Where did my flyer go? Here we go. Because <coughs> the butterfly is quite close to those words, I'm just gonna use that as a buffer to make it not go on to my words. And this butterfly down here. Hopefully we can see that 3D effect happening. So I'll have to bring your camera a little bit closer so you can see it. Any more questions? I have been neglecting my questions. Sorry guys. And don't forget we've got prizes to give away at the end here so stay tuned. We are almost finished. You want to be a prize winner and if you're watching the replay comment the word replay at the end of our live for a second chance, another chance at winning. If you don't win during the live, there's a chance to win in the next 24 hours with the replay. I can see that that just needs a bit more. Have I got all my flowers? I can go over it again in a little bit, just making sure. Essentials, great at answering some of these questions that you might be asking too, so. You can see the shimmer of the metallic if I just go back and forth. And now I'll just bring it up close so you can see that 3D look on the very outside of the flowers. And the butterfly, you can see the butterfly looks like he's got a bit of a 3D shadow happening. Thank you so much for sprinkling and sharing the live, guys. That's amazing. Yeah, see that butterfly? He's got that 3D look about him. Because I just shifted the stencil slightly just to do the gold. So here's that butterfly at the end there too might be it's got a shadow over it for right, right now it's a bit hard to see in the light and the flower you can kind of see just that really little thin line of the great gray charcoal okay <clears throat> let's see there we go so there's our finished look I hope you enjoyed that live today let me just wait for essential stencil to pick our prize winners Welcome to my new home, my new workshop space, which we may be on the back veranda next week. Who knows? We're just finding all sorts of interesting places that we can do things. Where's my little Bible book to show you that? So if you missed this part of the live, I know some people jump in and out of our lives um, every now and then. So here's the Bible that I did last week on last week's live for our tiered tray. So if you're new to Essential Stencils and you've never seen the Ambassadors, go check out last week's lives right here in the video section of their pa Facebook page. And um, you'll see some beautiful tiered tray ideas from Melissa and Amanda and, and I did one there too. Um, look at that. So we've got this gold in the pages and it's a little paper mache kind of book thing. Or it's a box. Um, but that was on the tiered tray. And then we also did this. So this is using the Spring Sayings stencil set which has all these gorgeous sayings in it. Here's the three pack here. And... Oh, I'll have to have a look for our prize winners. Oh, we do have some prize winners. I just wanted to quickly show you these other ones. So all things grow with love and live life in full bloom. So there's those three sayings in that three pack. Go check that out. Get, use my code IRESTOREStuff and you will get 10% off. Our winners today, congratulations, are Gail and Donna and Elizabeth. We've tagged your names right there in the comments. So um, claim your prize. The instructions are all right there. 
congratulations to you guys. If you are watching the replay, you can comment the word replay and get a chance to win in the next 24 hours. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe. Bye.